it has this smiley face. Oh, all right, all right. I'm gonna play with them in the future. <laughs> I don't want to mess. Up. I, I need to do that by myself. <laughs> Toby and I. Um, this is the faux pro, y'all. This is the faux finisher that was on Lust for Less in the last episode that did that beautiful marbling on the wall with a feather. Um, that was insane. Um, yeah. That blew my mind, Toby. I can't believe you did that. Um, just a little bit of history. Toby and I have been friends for, Toby, 16 years? Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. longer. Yeah. Maybe longer. Um, that's, that's crazy. But when I first got the place that I live in now, that's now the studio. Toby um, came in and did this amazing faux finish on the wall. And I got rid of it probably three years ago, just three <laughs> years ago. People are always like, why did you do that? that like, why would that's you do the that? Lace? No, that wasn't even a lace. We haven't even done the, hadn't even done the lace yet. We did lace at oh, Lawrence's. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. You see, okay. there's this history. We, uh, we've done commercial spaces and residential spaces together and done a lot of experimenting too with mm -hmm. cool and new techniques because you know how much I love wallpaper. Mm -hmm. And before I became that person, I was with Toby. And so for us to work together on Lux for Less together was kind of full circle beautiful, honestly, because we've both been in this game for a really long time yeah. in, a in a tough city, like kind of pioneering in our, in our particular spaces. And so to come through the ranks with you and then we can shine together where we get to shine, I love that. So I, yeah, like, I feel like I should be on the team. You I'm are throwing on the that, team. that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like I should be, like, taping, like, every project. I feel like there should be another opportunity that you and I could collaborate on. Okay. How about that? Well, it was Something really specific. It was interesting because I had so much fun. The day that I shot with y'all was so much fun. I was like, oh, my God, this is fun. <laughs> I thought you were gonna get annoyed. I mean, no. doing everything over and over and over and over again well, can be a little bit, you know. Well, you know, I dibble and dabble in production design anyway, so I know right. that side of things. You I know, know the TV know. very, very well. Toby, so brag a little I'm bit. To, brag huh? a little bit. Where have we seen you before? Um, no. Well, I do production. Um, I'm a production designer, so I've done a lot of reality shows here in Atlanta, like Housewives. Uh, Little Women, ATL. Oh my God, I've done um, uh, Nancy Grace. I've done a lot of stuff on the Nancy production. Nancy Grace? Yeah. That's crazy. That was yeah, we actually built a library set for her. So I've been able to take the knowledge from the faux finishing, the decorative painting, and kind of turn that into the whole production design thing. I really do. I like doing that. So to answer your question, no. No, I was not annoyed at all. I already know how it goes. I already know. I already know. What about one of the things that you do that I admire a lot is uh, you teach classes. And like in my head, honestly, I feel like a frustrated educator. That's what I really probably want to do. Um, but I'll just teach design. <laughs> um, how does that? How does that work? Like, how does somebody join your classes, and what could we expect to learn? Um, um, well, the classes were just evolution. I just evolved into it. Because when I first became a decorative artist, I was like, oh, my God, I would never teach. But then everybody that worked for me was like, oh, my God, you're such a good teacher. I mean, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this. You showed it to me once, maybe twice, and now I can do it. And then I don't get frustrated, you know, with my people either. I don't get frustrated with my team. You know, I just try to have a lot of patience. And then over time, that was always the message. Even when I hired new people who had no idea what they were doing, all of a sudden they were doing it. They was like, you, you should teach. You're a really good teacher. No way. Yeah. And then I always had the thing, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? Tell me how you do this. And I'm like, I'm not about to stop and tell you how to do anything. I got to okay. go to work. <laughs> no, no, but here's the thing. Okay. As someone who, just like you, like a really kind of specific niche, what we do, right? Did you feel threatened at any point to share your skill set with someone? Um, you know, that taking work away from you? Yeah. So a Initially, I felt threatened because people would just, they felt entitled. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that was the energy I always got. They felt entitled to what I was doing, how I was doing it. They wanted to know all the products, the, you know, just step by step. And I'm just like, dude, I go to my studio every week and I create. 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I come up with these finishes, I go and I learn them and then I take them back to my studio and I make them mine. Mm -hmm. So initially, yeah. So finally, one day I, I just had an epiphany. I don't know what happened. But I was like, I should teach. So I would gotten my new studio over off Chattahoochee and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I didn't even really tell people I was gonna do it, but I announced this huge class on Instagram. And next thing I know, all of my friends posted the class, reposted. My celebrity clients reposted it. Like it was, it was deep. Yeah, like I was Toby, like, okay. Toby is low key famous. She's being very modest. She's low key famous. <laughs> all her friends, you know, all of her friends, all of them. She's well loved and well known. Oh, in the well, in the you. best way possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, so that's pretty much how I got into teaching. I just people kept saying, "You gotta teach. You gotta teach. How do you do this?" And I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna start to do this." Mm -hmm. So that was in, I think, 2009 was my first class. Um, but now I have a whole online academy. So you can actually join my, you know, school and you can learn everything online. I'm there with you. Like all the videos are there. You can run them 24 hours. You have lifetime access. Um, that's available. And then I also do a boot camp four times a year. Mm -hmm. So all of this is in the Decorative Painting Academy because I really do want to teach people how to start and support their families doing this artistry. It's a real thing. Like, you can make a great living doing decorative painting. And then that also encompasses art, like the set design, the production. Like, you can do so much with all of these textures and techniques. So that's... Before I started um, painting with left paint, I remember I had... I was so in love with this one folk finish that, that you done that I had you do it like on a canvas, remember? And I oh, framed yes. it and people ask all, all the time, what is this piece? What is this piece? And you I'm like- You still have it? I think I do. I think it's in my storage now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yes. I know I have images of my place with it in nope. there. I could, okay. I could find- Is it I the one something. it's got gold? Exactly. Yeah. It was like backfield with gold and black. And mm -hmm. honestly, like I've come full circle back to that palette. Uh, mm -hmm. That working in that palette, that's crazy. But I thought that the finishes that you were doing looked like abstract art. So I was like, mm -hmm. how about I just frame this piece right here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. I remember. Okay. So what's it like in Atlanta today? What's it, it like? I'm in Chicago. It is beautiful. It's a pretty day? It's a day. little chilly. You know, usually it's like 110 one day, 30 the next, 80 the next. So today it's, it feels like about 60, 65. So... Yeah, it's it's really overcast here. It's actually raining a little bit. Um, mm. I did not get dressed for that. Um, I'm with my <laughs> I'm with my fancy friend in a fancy restaurant. Look, you see my backdrop? It's you fabulous. See my backdrop, right, right, I, right. I wish right. I was there. He's protesting fancy friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, no, but I miss home. I actually just got here yesterday. I was just okay. wondering if the weather was different today. Yeah, that's all. No, it's beautiful. But I meant Somebody. to tell you, so when I saw you at High Point, um, I don't know if you remember, but I was at my decorative painting convention. Is that what was happening? Yeah. So I we're partnered it. with um, High Point, and they let the convention, you know, the members of our convention come right. to High Point. So we were, Sweet. we were on our field trip when I saw you. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I literally was going live to just remind everybody it was Monday. Hey, watch Lux for Less, da 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 da. And as I'm walking, and I'm, and, and that's the episode that you were on. Mm -hmm. Before I could say Toby Sanders is gonna be on the episode tonight, I saw you. My reaction was so real. People always like, "Are you acting?" Like, no, that was real. I'm not that good of an actor. Like, seriously, <laughs> Toby, that was insane. It was because I didn't even see you. All I heard was somebody said, "Toby," and I'm yes. like, "Yes, who, who yes. knows me?" <laughs> yes. They, the people probably thought, okay, what are you do you want to tell us something? You super famous? Like seriously, because I act like you were like Jesus. I was like, oh my God, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Oh my and you just showed up. God. It's the strangest thing ever. Yeah. It was yeah. strange, but good. Yeah. But good. Um, and then a lot of people at the convention saw the episode. Oh wow. So the next day during the convention, I had at least twelve people come up to me. They were like, Oh my God, we just saw you on TV last night. Oh man, that's oh, so. That's it was cool. cool. That's really cool. I, yeah. I cannot believe how that happened, but 
Th those are those orchestrated moments. Mm -hmm. That was divine. That was it was just good. It was good. So did they like the Marvel? Oh my God. Uh, the client that client from that episode was in the live after. She was tweet live tweeting. She had a party around the episode. Because oh. you remember they broke up our season and everything got moved and pushed around. So she'd been waiting, thinking that her episode was gonna air, I think like in January. Oh. So oh, okay. it's just airing in May. She'd been like sitting with bathing bated breath, you know. Like our friends are like, Are you sure this actually happened? But <laughs> she's she's so supportive. Oh. She's so happy with what she got. Um, and I couldn't have asked for a more grateful mm. uh, family to work with in that space. They were really, really cool, Toby. Mm -hmm. They're and really cool. Out gorgeous. They Beautiful. They love what you did. I'd never mm -hmm. done a galley kitchen. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the truth is, I didn't know how to make that good. I was like, how do I make mm -hmm. this good? And the mm -hmm. idea of having you there meant that I had one less thing to focus on so I could put the energy yeah. towards the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. um, I know you by reputation. And another thing, um, with me is that I don't go by reputation. Whenever I hire a contractor, um, if I can afford it, I'll work with them personally first. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, our clients are trusting us with so much money. Yes. You know what I mean? It, it still makes me nervous. So I'm like, if I'm going to bring somebody in, I need to have some history. You and I have that history. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. I'm like, you show up and it's done. That's it. That's it. And you can't, nobody, nobody wants anything more than that. Like, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Blessed Little Bungalow asked if you offer um, Venetian plaster or lime washing. Um, yes, yeah, so I actually have some samples of Venetian. Because um, remember when I came, when we did our initial um, consultation for the show, I think I showed you this one. Mm. So this is actually a Venetian, but with the vein, with the marble veining. When you tap your nail on it, I feel like it's stone. I can hear yep. it. It's audible. That's crazy. Yep. And I actually teach this in the academy as well. So yes, I do offer Venetian plaster. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, that's that's probably the finish I use the most. Yeah. That's that's my absolute favorite. It all it's rich. It's timeless. <laughs> it always adds um, a visual value, but it also it feels like it's adding actual mm -hmm. value. It does. Um, it feels very expensive. It feels very rich. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. That's why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I feel like I'm interviewing you, but I'm asking questions that I do want to know. Like, you started out as a photo finisher. I know that couldn't have been popular, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you were. I feel like you were ahead of the curve. Like, what did the people around you feel? Like your mom and you, you know your family. Like, you want to do what? Yeah. So, so my mom and my dad were very supportive. Okay. Um, oddly enough, I didn't know how they were going to take it, but mom, my mom was like, okay. But she also <laughs> knew that I was good at saving money. Like I'd saved, saved up all this money, really? you know, while I was working in the corporate world. Um, so I did things and I lived with her probably till I was about 24, 25. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I made sure that I was good financially, um, before I took that step, but I was actually forced out. Um, I I was laid off of my corporate job and it was just coincidental because the, I had taken vacation and I wasn't going on vacation. I was going to decorative painting school and wow. the week before I was supposed to take vacation, they laid me off. Like I had fell to the bottom 5% of all the computer programmers <laughs> you know, at that time. They were laying people off quarterly. Yeah, so for yeah. two years I dodged the layoffs, but it finally yeah. was my time. And then, you know, I went, I went to school, and I just never looked back. Never looked back. Wow. So they were wow. very supportive. And um, after I took my first decorative painting class, I sat down with my cell phone, and I called everybody in that cell phone. I'm like, look, this is what I'm doing now. I have a whole new business. When do you want to schedule a consultation? It costs $50 for me to come over. <laughs> <laughs> like I was not taking no for an answer. And there's that like, price still is that price no. still hold? The consultation now is four ninety five <laughs> and it's non refundable. <laughs> but I think back then it, I think people were more supportive because they were like so I started the conversation. I just got laid off. Who who doesn't have fifty bucks for that? Wait a minute. You are not pulling that heartstrings like that. You I did. 
I was like, yeah, I you, gotta make this right. Work. Your mama don't have to worry about you. She never had to worry about okay. you. Okay, <laughs> I get my hustle from her definitely. But um, but that's what I did. I called everybody on my phone. I'm like, yo, I just got laid off. I'm opening up this new business. This is what I'm doing. I would love to, you know, take a consultation with you. It costs fifty bucks, and I literally had like fifteen consultations. Whoa! From from those calls. Wow! Like the first week, and I didn't even know how. To to paint anything then i was just like fresh out of school never had painted a while and i was like okay there's there's something about being fresh out of school and still being that naive mm -hmm. that kind of pushes you forward yeah. right i wish you could get some of that back i, know. I wish you could get oh. some of that, that fire yeah back. the passion yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 i think it's pretty dope that took you a chance. Uh, you started in the class and now you offer classes mm -hmm. so is that like I mean, is that cathartic for you? Is that something you did because you understood the importance? Um, both, actually. Because um, even now, I take Zoom calls every day just to talk about the program and try to get people enrolled into it. And I just feel so, like, these people are inspiring me. Because I log in, they're like, oh, my God, it's really you. They've been following me forever. they like, I love, like, everybody I've talked to on the phone, they already know. They already yeah. know me, my, my work, my story. And it's just, I mean, just that, even if they don't sign up, I'm like, that was great. It was great conversation. You know, I just want to at least plant the seed. You know what I'm saying? Because they yeah. can come back around when they get ready. That's yeah. of thing. So yeah. it's been good teaching. I really, and then especially like when people come to me and, and take the hands-on training, like some of the people literally are in tears at the end of the weekend. They cry. Because, because they feel like the experience was life changing. You know what I'm saying? They may, may be, I don't know, an accountant sitting behind a desk all day, but they don't have a passion for that. But you just right. have to do something because you got to pay your bills. Right. So finally, they come see me and they're like, "Oh my God, I should have done this a long time ago." Because I give them a a skill set. You understand a real yeah. life skill set where you can make money. Whether yeah. it's base coat painting, Venetian plaster, it's just like if you're doing hair or, you know, it's it's a service. So once you learn that, no one can take that away from you. Right. And so when they come see me for the two or three days, they're just like, they feel like it's life changing because I teach them all these techniques. And then I teach them how to make money doing the techniques. And they're just yeah. like, this was crazy. I should have did this a long, long, long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I Okay. I, com I completely identify with that. That was my moment of figuring out that, dang, what is this interior design, you know, back mm -hmm. in New York? And, um, like, couldn't wait to enroll in school. Couldn't wait to discover this thing that had been sitting here the whole time, like, inside of me that needed to come out. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to hear you how, how you described it, but yeah. that's exactly how I, I would feel. I imagine that, you know, somebody who's deep in their profession, especially somebody like accounting, like you just referenced, you know, going somewhere and feeling seen and feeling like they're adding value in a way that also makes them happy. That's, that's, in, yeah. that's, that's insane. Yeah. That's so it's cool. just, I mean, every time someone comes to see me, they're just like, I can't believe you poured into me so much. Like I tell them and give them everything. I don't hold anything back. It's no secret. Mm -hmm. I give them my order and information, everything. So. Everybody's waiting. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, I will never do what you do, <laughs> ever. I believe in hiring experts to do what experts do. I feel like that's the only reason I have a job, right? Uh, mm -hmm. People who believe in hiring an ex hired experts. So um, designers are like, like awesome and creative. And, you know, there's a lot of people that I revere. But I think each designer is really only good as a team, Toby, right? And part of our job is being really organized in a way that we know who to call for what mm -hmm. and where to retreat, where to push forward. And in your space, I completely retreat. I can't do that. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have time, but also I would never do it as well as you because it is, like you just said, a skill set. Yeah. How long have you been honing your skill set? I mean, it's about 26 years now. 26 years? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I knew that. Yeah. Yeah, because I started and I started really 2000, my business in like 2004. Mm -hmm. So how long is that? 20 years? get the content. Huh? 
Huh? That was saying hi to somebody. You said you started in 2004? Yeah, That's so 19, how long? Is it? How 19 years. years. 19. 19. Okay, years. so before I was doing, started my business, I was painting. What like, kind of painting? I was doing the decorative painting, but I didn't know it was a thing. I was doing it for fun. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so we had the same thing. Yeah. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an architect, right? I landed in New York in fashion, but not glamorous, like on the retail side. Mm -hmm. And um, started working with an interior designer. And I was like, first of all, I didn't know what he did, right? Um, and when he took me to the D&D &D building, I'm, and he's dragging me around, I was like, oh, God, what is it? Like, we're paying you to do this? Right. Like, right. I want to do this. Like, I want to do this. And that's that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. how it all started. Yeah. yeah. And so that's how it was for me. I'd always been very creative. You know, I get that from my mom. And I did, I painted for a long time before I woke up and was like, oh, I can make money doing this? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So once but I figured that out, I never turned back. So what's next? Um, next for me is probably to transition off the ladder and just help people full time with their businesses. Because I have a community that I serve now but, you know, I like to listen to them and talk to them to see what their pain points are. And mm -hmm. a lot of it is time, fear, and I'm just really trying to be here to help these people, you know, through their journey. Mm -hmm. But I can't mm -hmm. help and paint at the same time. So I've decided to um, really try to focus on helping the next man or the next sounds person. Mm -hmm. That sounds dope. Mm -hmm. The transition, I feel like in addition to being incredibly creative and having to stay ahead of everything that, you know, is entering the world of faux paint, right? You have mm -hmm. to stay educated. But in addition to all that, I feel like you have, you have to be an incredible business person. Mm -hmm. You Not, do. 19 years? You do. You must be, mm -hmm. do you teach any of that in your class? Yes. That is probably half of the courses in the online class. And then when they come to the academy, we literally sit down like we're in school with notebooks. My notebooks are like this thick. Seriously? And I have a course. Yeah, I mean, I have a course on invoicing. I have a course on estimates. I have a course on pricing. And I even give them my real life estimates and invoices so that they can see this is how I do my business. Because I don't want to sell them a pipe dream. You know what I'm saying? So the invoices could be, they range from $2,000 up to $25,000. But I give them all that information because I really want them to understand the business side of it. So if you come to me and learn how to paint, which a lot of people do, and then they don't join the academy, they leave and then they don't know how to run a business. So what was all that for? You know what right. I'm saying? So now with the academy, you get both. You don't get a choice. You James so. is making me laugh. He's doing like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes. It, that's because yeah, uh, I was what? curious about that yeah I um, think a lot of that comes because I was a, um, I had my bachelor's in business so I think I was trained like that first and then became the artist so that's kind of I think what got me through I was always the business person first I did. and then <laughs> yeah I did. I needed that. I still need it. Do you? That's smart. That's super smart. Yeah. I still need it. I feel like um, I've been going back and forth about doing classes. I don't know if I was going to be in person. I don't know if it was going to be virtual. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what's next, right? First was the new site and then, in, you know, beginning the e-com part of it. But for me, I wanted to do the classes because I told you I want to be your teacher. Right. Um, <laughs> but I need to sit with you. I mean, yeah. Can I give you some advice? Absolutely. So... You should build your community first. This is how I feel. Because mm. um, I'm going through this now. I feel like you should build your community first. And you should launch your business coaching first. Before you even do videos. See, I went about it differently. I launched the school with all the videos first. With no community. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm building the community now. And the, the, the online courses and Stuff, all that's great but you need to have the community right. so I feel like you should start now with just taking one-on-one -on -one coaching 
maybe it's one person a month or you know you take on one person a month to see how you feel and build your coaching business first and then too that'll also allow you to see how many people are interested you know how many people want to be in your community um and i was telling the client uh about this the other day she finally started her subscription or membership group and i think that's something you should do as well for a nominal fee but maybe it's you know meet with michelle once a month mm -hmm. and you can start your coaching that way so get people in maybe it's i don't know 39 dollars a month that they can sit with you twice a month as a group you know mm -hmm. you just talk to design you show past projects what you made i mean Obviously, they're going to tune in. You're on HDTV. You know what you're talking about, right? But I feel like you should start with a membership group or, you know, one-on-one -on -one business coaching and then move over and maybe into the online digital space. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. That's smart. I'm, I'm the king of having all this content just going to waste. Oh, um, oh just because me I'm too. Just, I get so excited about creating the content, right? And I got you all this stuff just sitting there <laughs> and by the time i'm ready to use it i feel like it's dated um, yeah yeah that's you know how I, I am i have literally 15 years of content Dude. and it's so organized yeah because yeah. i keep thinking oh no there'll be an opportunity there'll be an opportunity and at worst if i don't if i feel like the work i don't want to look at me from whatever right that's. <laughs> <laughs> no i feel you trust me Toby, trust this, me when is your birthday may 20th Toby's birthday is May 20th. My birthday is May 10th. Um, so it's this big Taurus energy right mm -hmm. here. Um, <laughs> yes. He's laughing. <laughs> He's laughing. But I, my little nephew is a is a Taurus for it, Toby. And um, he was at the house last week. And whenever he does something, you know, not nice, my brother's like, that's that Taurus. And I'm like, oh, what? I rebuke that. I rebuke that too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't appreciate that because I am very nice <laughs> I'm all the time. You are one of the nicest Tauruses I've ever met, Thank actually. <laughs> Way too nice, but, right? <laughs> especially to be in this business. It's hard being nice in this business. Yes, um, it, it is. It really is. Because part of what we do um, as, as artists and contributing to communities that we contribute in is educating people on the value of what we're contributing mm -hmm. while we're doing it right. at the same time. Right. Um, like just for me, even like that sample you just held up, you brought that sample um, to the show also, to the episode. And it was just, it sounds, and I don't mean this in the most positive way, not condescending at all, but it was just professional. Mm -hmm. It was just well done. It was the kind of presentation I want to make to a client, you know, because I feel like most of what we do and everything that I do, and I know you do, is aspirational. It should feel that way. Yeah. It, and I mean, even the way you present, and you and I are friends, you didn't bring me some shoddy sample. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know what I do. I mean, there's, right. no, there's <laughs> never any arrogance about it. It's, it's it, but, it, but it's always pride in the work, yeah. in what you're leaving behind, leaving a space better than you found it. Like, what's the point mm -hmm. that you're not doing that? See, I and, have to you come talk to the academy, hey. <laughs> I'll be the mouthpiece. You give me the infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. I got to have you come on and talk to the, to the children. But no, they seriously, would love that goes they love so far for me. That goes so far for me because, I mean, the most important thing in our relationship is the trust, right? Mm -hmm. Our clients have to trust us. But in order for us to work together, you know, Sub to sub, but we have to trust each other too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll, it starts. It starts there for me, and you walking in the way that you do, as confident, and then like the trick, the feather took me out. You could knock <laughs> me over with the feather. <laughs> the feather took me out. I was like, okay. Can I tell you your secret? <laughs> yeah, go. So when we actually filmed the show, that wasn't the actual feather I used. Of course. Okay. <laughs> So it was funny because that show aired during the decorative painting convention, like the International Decorative Artesian League. Yes. So everybody, so my roommate, she's been in the business, God, 35, 40 years, super professional, world renowned. So we're sitting there talking, she's watching the show and she was like, oh, she's not worried about me being on the show or happy or anything. First thing she says, 
you feathered that with a red, you marbled that with a red feather? I'm like, that's what you say? <laughs> like, I'm on HGTV. That's the first thing you say. Yeah, right. So it was so funny. She was like, oh my God, I just imagine red dye running down the wall. And I was just like, I, so I, said, I said, no, I didn't have my normal turkey feather in my toolbox. So I just pulled that out for the camera. That, and it that was the camera. <laughs> you understand. So you got to understand both worlds. We know what works in real life. But right. also, what's going to work for TV? That's exactly. two different things. Two exactly. different things. So no one wants to see a brown turkey feather. They want no. to see a red turkey feather. Exactly. <laughs> Very smart. The homeowner, Jen Manley, is in the live. Toby, she says hi. Hi. <laughs> Your house is beautiful. I hope you're enjoying it. I want that kitchen, really. Um, and that bathroom. Mm -hmm. I, was, I think I have a the screenshot that I have. I'm going to post this uh, short video of Toby and I on my uh, stories once we hang up. Um, but the thing that I love the most about the bathroom is it looked like this stool that I got from Made Goods. Um, yes. it, it looked like it was a part of the wall. It and looked, I never even saw the stool. Toby, it was so good. I was it, like... and, and, and no, and you never saw it. She's meaning that she didn't see the stool before, um, as a point of reference, before she started the foe. I installed all of the furniture after she was done. And it, mm -hmm. it was <laughs> so good. <laughs> we couldn't even so plan that, right? Yeah, it was the so, same exact so good. color. Yes. Everything. The coloring and everything. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. It was really good. All right, babe, I got to get to my next thing. What, what, what's the last thing you want to leave us with? Um, I just want everybody to go out there and be great. You know what I'm saying? Just be grateful for the people in your life. And to pick up the phone and call them or to reach out and give them a hug because life is short. And oh, if you can do all, all of that and make everything beautiful, so be it. And then, too, if you want to be a decorative painter, come see me. <laughs> you know, little plug, shameless plug. Sorry. No, no, no. I don't care about a shameless plug. There's no shame in what you deliver. It. Um, I feel you on the first part, though, about, you know, being a great for the people you love. I don't know. I'm, it's birthday time, right? So, of course, I'm super reflective. And the older I get, the cornier I get. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I really have been thinking about that a lot. You know, I didn't balance as well as you do, did. I feel like you have a really great balance of your friendships and your um, time you spend on your personal life versus time you spend on work. I was always a little bit one-sided, work-heavy. And, and so lately, I've been a lot more intentional about uh, making time for friends and, and letting them know that I see them too as much. I mean, people like you and I are always looking and needing support from our friends. Yeah. You know, we're in business. And so the idea of them only showing up to support me and not vice versa and or me making time or they making excuses for me before they ask, hey, can you come? They, they just figure that I'm working. Yeah. And they're like, ooh, I've set a terrible trend here. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. I really appreciate what, that, what you just said because I'm there. Yeah. I'm being more intentional about being a better friend, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love you, friend. And I love anytime you, too, you need some, something, give me a call. First on my list. Yeah. First on my list. All right. Have a great Saturday, babe. Thanks for joining us. All right. Safe travels back home. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.